Hello, in today's video I'll be photographing wildflowers, so if you want to know how I photograph wildflowers, then keep watching. I came out this morning to do a landscape photography video, but the light was really miserable, so I thought I'd do a landscape photography video with a difference. Um, I'm not going to do any landscapes. So because the weather has been absolutely miserable the last few weeks, I thought I'd come down and try and get some photographs of some wildflowers. I've come to my local patch of wild garlic, so you can see behind, got loads of wild garlic, and it's, it's got a really pungent smell off it, which is really beautiful, so. Shut up, a noisy road. I'm videoing by a road here, and it's so noisy, I have to keep stopping while these cars go past. Um, here's another one. Right, when I'm photographing wildflowers, there's, there's a couple of things I do. Um, this is private land over there, so I'm not going to go into it, but if I can get close up, um, with, especially with, with larger things like bluebells or wild garlic, um, I like to get it close with a log in the middle and just have those around the log just to give a bit of um, scale to those flowers. But also, I like to go in really close because some of these flowers down here are really stunning. So if you get right down low, you can put, um, f don't focus right in front of you, um, pick one or two flowers that are a bit further back so you can get some leaves or foliage in the foreground and that will give you um, some blurred green and things so you can really focus in on the white flowers of these garlics. So I'll just talk you through my setup here. Um, I've got the camera set up on a tripod and I've got one of those tripods where you can extend the legs even further and these are really invaluable because you can get really low to the ground so you can get it from the perspective of the flower so you're going about the height of these flowers and I'm using a 300 mm lens um, to, to really focus in on the heads of these flowers and because I don't have a macro lens what I'm using is um, an extension tube And these extension tubes I got from the shop, they're really cheap. I think they're about 30, 40 pounds, something like that when I got them. I've had them quite a few years, so it may have gone up a bit. And what those extension tubes do, it's, it kind of turns your, your normal lens into kind of a macro lens. It pushes the distance between the lens and the, your medium, so the sensor or your film, and it will just really change the depth of field and um, the point of focus. So on this lens, the focal point is about between one and two meters, something like that. But when you put an extension tube on it, it really dramatically reduces that so I can get within a meter or so of these flowers. So the kit that I've got, these extension tubes come in three different sizes and you can add one, two or three to give you different effects that you want. So at the moment I've got one and that, that drops it down a little bit, but if I've got three on, I can get really close to these flowers, but it does drop the depth of field dramatically. So it's difficult to get it all in focus. If you can see there's a bit of garlic just there on its own, the, it's just the head of it. And I'm focusing, I'm probably about a meter away. So I'm focusing right on that one. I've got all the foliage blurred around it and I'm just emphasizing that white flower head in this photograph and everything else is blurred. The foreground leaves um, are in the photo as well but because they're blurred it's kind of really making that flower head stand out. So using my telephoto and the extension tubes I managed to get really close up on some of these ramson flowers and took a number of different photographs some at the, the level of the flowers and some looking right down on them so you get lots of different compositions from these photos. So I've, I've moved around quite a bit now, I've got some really nice photos, and now I'm gonna move on to my local common, which has some really beautiful wildflowers. I'm really lucky to live by this Malvern Common, and this common really has some stunning wildflowers. And if you can see down here, we've got all these beautiful lady smock, which are really nice. So what I think I'm gonna do is get some photographs close up on these, using my 100 to 300 mil lens, getting up as close as I can. So to get the best of these lady smock, what I've done is to get in really close, I've gone low down, I've put a Canon 70 to 300 mil lens on and I'm using an extension tube. I'm using ISO 400, which I generally don't do for um, large landscapes, but because this is quite an intimate close-up shot, 400 is ideal. There's very little noise um, on this camera, so that gives me another couple of stops 
to really make that a quicker exposure to try and capture these flowers before the wind blows them around. And I've been here for quite a long time now, just you only get a few split seconds of time um, when there isn't any wind. So I'm just hanging around. I'm using a remote release, so I'm just waiting. As soon as the, the wind stops, I'll take the photograph. And I've taken a couple of different photographs, some in portrait, some in landscape. And what I've done, I've tried to use, focus in on one at the front and have a lot of the other flowers in the background really blurred to add a bit more white or if I want some darker colours, like use the grass to get some green in there to make some different effects on those flowers. So I've got some really good ones here. I'm now going to try and find some more. There are some cowslips all around. Um, I know there's definitely some over in that direction, so I'm going to go over there in a minute. We've got the Malvern Hills in the background, and on West Malvern, on the other side, there's some really beautiful bluebells. And there's a whole massive field of these bluebells. So I want to try and go over there as well, um, as well to get some of these photographs. And as the light is really flat and boring at the moment, it is ideal for these um, especially the lighter flowers because you don't get any sunlight on them so you don't get any burnt out highlights and the contrast is very low so you can get all the detail in those flowers so even though we've got miserable light this is absolutely perfect for doing floral photography. Right I just packed up the camera and I was taking some photos just down here and just on my way back just just down here I found these absolutely beautiful little things. Um, they look like really nice special flowers but they're they're the seed heads of some type of grass. I'm not very good on types of grass, but have a look at this. This is, I've never seen anything like this. It's really beautiful. I don't know if you can focus. So I've taken a few photographs of that, and I think what I've, I think that's the pollen on the grass. So I've taken a few photographs of that, gone up again with the same 300mm lens and the extension tube, gone in close and blurred out the background. Um, it's extremely windy again now, so I've been sat there for about 20 minutes to try and get, wait till the, the wind dies a bit just to get a photograph. I'm assuming that there, it's pollen or something like that, but uh, as all you flower knowing people um, out there might be able to tell me what it is, but I'm gonna look it, look it up when I get back. Um, planning. Botanist, that's it. This common land is really good. Uh, thankfully, they preserve this and they don't cut it. They'll leave all this, um, this grassland because there's lots of really nice flowers in here. So they'll leave that for the, um, the hay later on in the year so they don't cut it and we get some really beautiful flowers on here. So I'm very fortunate to live in this location. In all my videos, I talk about safety and I say that for a reason. Taking photographs of wildflowers is extremely dangerous. So when I was taking these photographs here of these, these bluebells, um, it really is important to wear proper trousers that fit. Um, as I was crouching down to do them, the trousers came down and these stinging nettles went up my backside. So I'm not gonna be able to sit down for a while. Uh, so I learned the painful way to try and make things safer for you. So my final destination for today is to photograph these cowslips behind me. I'm right next to a busy road, so hopefully you better hear me okay with the cars going past. But there is an absolute mass of these beautiful cowslips. So I'm going to try and take a photograph with them with close-ups and also in a mass as, as, as a one big photograph. Um, so I'll see how we go on these. So if you don't have a macro lens, and I don't because I very rarely do flower photography or have the need. So these extension tubes are a cheap alternative and they really are useful. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and leave me a comment on what you thought. This isn't my usual landscape photography and I'm not a floral photographer, so I don't take photographs of flowers very often, but I really do hope you like these compositions. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. See you next time and hopefully there'll be a better light for some landscape photography.